Hey there YouTubers, I just picked up this wind turbine for an off-grid power generation. Um, I saw an ad online, it was fairly inexpensive, it was $134. They claim it's 500 watt, 12 volt uh, system. Uh, we're going to do an unboxing and I'm going to do a test, a bench test on this to see what kind of output this thing actually does. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to connect it to do a bench test and we're going to go from there. All right, so let's get to the unboxing. I'll put a link to this product in my description. Um, I don't make any money. I'm not a sponsored, this is not a sponsored video. This is something I saw. I wanted to give a try and uh, share my experience with you guys. There's an installation guide. I'll put a, uh, I'll put some pictures of it so you guys can see it. Uh, it doesn't seem too overly difficult. Uh, so we'll set that aside over here. Also a user's manual. Set that over here by the installation guide. And it looks like we have on top are the blades. They have some give to them, but they uh, feel pretty, feel pretty sturdy. And this is a five-blade system. And uh, the blades are supposed to be 24 inches long. I'll measure these. Make sure they're 24 inches. There, the first layer of styrofoam. Some mounting hardware, rubber piece. We'll figure what that is with the installation instructions. This has got some weight to it. Here is the actual wind turbine has this coupler here that it spins on. Looks like the wires are spin. Uh, don't know if it's got some type of ring brush system in there or not, but I mean the wires continually spin, so I'm gonna assume there's like some kind of brushes and ring contact points in there. So when this spins, It'll maintain contact because you can see the wires are not turning while that's spinning. So, and that seems to spin fairly good. So the bearings seem pretty good on that. Um, feels pretty sturdy construction. So there's our wind turbine. This guy spins right here. So I'm gonna see if there's a way I'm gonna be able to spin that and then test the output leads. So there's three leads here. I'm gonna have to look at the instructions and figure out why do I have three. Normally on a 12 volt system you just have power and ground. This one has three wires. So we'll figure that out. Uh, this is your mounting cap for what you attach your blades to. That, will, that just fell off of here when I opened it. And there's the large nylon nut that will go on here and that will looks like you somehow tighten that down. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Again I'll look at the instructions and then you'll have a nose cap that'll go over top of once the blades are connected and last is this little box and aha comes with its very own charge controller. Well, it's a small little guy. Don't know if this, this says it's a 30 amp. Um, we'll see how this wind, they call it a wind controller. We'll see how this charge controller works. I may, I'll start out using this, but I may end up getting a different like MPPT 
or some other type of charge controller to get the power off this. But for now, uh, we're gonna try to do this fairly inexpensive. So I'm gonna use what's supplied. I don't have to buy another charge controller because this came with it. All right, that's all it's in the box. So let's go ahead, I'll stop the video here and I'm gonna set up a bench test and see what we can do, figure out what those wires are. Okay, so this kit came with a hex key for tightening up, holding up, being able to hold this steady to tighten this nut. Um, what I did to run a test on this, I cut a piece of that hex key up, put it in my drill. So I'm chucking this up in my drill and I'm gonna use this to go ahead and rotate the fan or the turbine. And I got a couple meters set up here to measure the output. I did some tests. I have a AGM 105 amp hour Duracell AGM battery that I've connected this meter up to. I had to draw this battery down. It was fully charged, so I hooked my inverter up to it, ran a space heater so I can take about a volt off of this. That way it can accept the load so I can get some real numbers out of this turbine. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I'm going to move the camera so you can see these meters and see what kind of amps wattage that I'm actually pulling off of this turbine. And it's kind of hard for me to keep a consistent speed. And I get to a point where I'm going so fast, this actually has an overrun break on it. So when it runs too fast, it'll actually break and I can feel that in the drill. It's stopping and I go ahead and release because I don't want to cause any damage to the wind turbine. So I'm going to go ahead and reset up my camera so you can see these meters. And uh, we'll go ahead and give her a test so you can see some numbers. Quick little thing on these meters, they're like nine, 10 bucks on Amazon. Again, I'm gonna put a link in the description. And what it does, if you're kind of curious how much money you're saving, you know how much you spend per uh, kilowatt hour. This thing will actually keep track of how many amp hours you've generated. Now you take your amp hours, times it by your volts, which is your 12 volts. That's gonna give you your watts or your kilowatts. So this will actually tell you how much, you can actually figure out the cost of electricity you saved by having this little meter. And as long as it's connected to the battery and it has power, it'll never erase. And um, they also come with, you can put an external power source on here. That way in case the battery dies completely, this still will have power. Or if you wanna disconnect it from the battery, but you don't wanna wipe your data, you can have an external power source connected to these as well. They come with a little cable that you connect in there. Okay, here you go. I also connected this meter. You can see this voltmeter is reading 12.43. This is reading 12.46. So they're very similar readings. So I'm, I'm gonna trust this device. Uh, and what this is doing, it's going to read what how many amps we're pulling from the source. So this is the windmill side. So this is the generation side. And then we've got the load. So this is what's gonna be going to the battery. So we're gonna see how many watts we're putting into the battery and how many volts. Now, when this wind turbine starts, you start reading volts right away. Um, the watts don't kick in right away. They kick in after so many RPMs. And I don't know what that is. I don't have an RPM meter right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start turning the turbine and you'll see the amps kick up and you'll see the, the wattage going into the deep cell battery. Yeah, here we go. So you see the watts going up. I'm not going very fast. You don't see the voltage go up because I'm not exceeding what the battery is already at. Battery's at 12.4 volts. When I had the battery disconnected, I was reading five volts, eight volts, 10 volts. But I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up. Now I'm at 18 watts. Go a little faster. Now you see the voltage starting to creep up. 12.5 and I'm 40 watts, oh, hit the overbreak. So I squeeze it a little too hard. But there you can see, I know they say this is a 500 watt unit. I'm reading 
40, 50 watts coming out of it. Uh, so there you go. There's your little bench test. So there you have it, quick little bench test. We're going to go ahead and get this all assembled. And I still gotta buy a few things to get the pipe on the side of the house, get it up in the air. I gotta buy some wire to run the wire all the way into the house, get this stuff all mounted, get, get the charge controller in place, get the inverter in place, get my circuitry all done. So this is gonna be a little bit of to do. I got, like I said, I got a few more things to buy and we're gonna have this hopefully within the next few weeks up in the air generating power that way we can start pulling generating our own electricity saving a little money having a little bit of off-grid power when we need it in case we lose power so again small little start little baby steps but this system i am going to be growing it so make sure you subscribe uh, click the notification bell so you can see this system as it grows and i'm going to take you step by step on the installation how i installed it any things i've learned along the way and maybe if you guys have any ideas that you think this could be a little bit better for me a little better way to connect it put it in the comments um, i'm not an electrician so please take that in heart and uh, i'm doing this as a hobby and i want to see how big i can grow this system and how independent i can be on this off-grid system that i'm building all right so i'm going to continue through with the installing this um, I give you all the required hardware a lot of locking nylon bolts that look like you can put the nylon bolts in this little they have little hex recesses that these go into and yeah through and it gives you a little tool here to tighten it down. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. For all the blades and put it on fast speed here so you don't have to sit here. Watch me. Okay, so I did notice that I was putting the blades on backwards, so that's what I was showing you there, that they do go a certain way, so that kind of sped me up, and I was able to get them all on. Make sure they're good and tight. You don't want any of these flying off, it'll just damage the whole thing. All right, now I put that on. Now, when you're putting this locking nylon bolt on or nut on here, make sure you tighten it all the way. I didn't tighten it all the way. And that thing rattled the first night all night long. Felt like my washing machine was on spin cycle all night. There you go. It's completely assembled, just like that. Take it outside two inch pole you can mount it up up on your roof you can mount it on a pole in the backyard however you want to mount it so this is just gonna set it down here it's taking up a lot of room right now pole I'm going to use is a two inch rigid conduit that way I can run the cables through the bottom. And I'm going to use antenna mounts for the side of the house. You remember the antennas they used to put the TV antennas on, they still make those mounts. I'm going to buy a couple of those and run a pole up and then run it into the house where I'm going to have all my controllers and batteries and inverters connected. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can see episode two, the next step, part two, on getting this installed. Thanks for watching.